Welcome back to Nadal and Tobago. Hey, Ramson, and this is the Morning Brew, and we're starting our conversation about sleep apnea because you know we make sure that you have all the the facts of, uh, in relation to living a healthy and better life. And Sophie and Greg, we join us on set. Good morning. Thank you for joining us. Good morning, morning Hema. Well, let me start with you, just for the benefit of our viewers. What is sleep apnea? Well, sleep apnea is a condition that most people may not realize they're dealing with, wherein you stop and start breathing repeatedly in your sleep. Uh, most often it's identified by habitual snoring. Um, that <laughs> noise that you're hearing night after night is not just a cry for help, but it's actually telling most people that it's time to take a look at what's going on with your health in regards to what it could be doing. Um, sleep apnea is killing people every single day. It's a silent threat that most people don't recognize, unfortunately, until something serious has happened. So most people are going to think sleep deprivation is going to kill me. They're not going to make that, that link. Well, unfortunately, because sleep doesn't pain you like a toothache, you know, most people don't address it in the same manner. But if you haven't slept for a few hours, and I'm sure we've all fed it at some point and been wide awake for more than 20 hours, 24 hours at a time, you feel that intoxicating feeling where you just can't seem to you know, comprehend your reflexes, your, your alertness, everything is affected. Imagine from night in, night out, you're losing quality sleep, and eventually you've gotten to the point where you've just lived with it, and you're stimulating yourself through multiple cups of coffee or whatever you're using to try to keep yourself awake and alert. Uh, but at the end, it's actually detrimental to your health. And, you know, in terms of the, a lot of people are going to tell you, well, I have a crazy job, and I just can't sleep more. I mean, I, I, you know, they, they think they can run off to four to five hours. What is the, what, how much sleep should I really be getting? Well, as an adult, we should be getting somewhere close to seven or eight hours. Um, that I'm severely <laughs> sleep deprived. Well, you and I both. Um, I'm not immune to sleep problems as just anyone else. Um, the sad thing is that as I did a little research here over the last four or five years, the average Trinidadian is sleeping about five to five and a half hours. Um, I'm just taking, speaking here with Safia, and she mentioned about her drive this morning and just thinking about the amount of awake time that someone actually is awake during the day just to be able to overcome the culture and the traffic that it takes to get to and fro work and all the other responsibilities that you have. Um, it leaves a limited amount of time to sleep. And with the stresses of life and things that kind of go through your head all day long, you tend to not be able to fall asleep when you need to. You know? So it's definitely a challenge for many of us. And you are now screening people for this. Yes, well, we work with, in collaboration with ISD Health Solutions, and we offer the first step part of this whole process. So any of our viewers here today, or any customer, can walk into any of our seven conveniently located pharmacies. Um, in the north, we have St. Anne's and Mocha, South Gulf View and Marabella, East Trin City and St. Augustine, and West West Moorings. So they can come into any of our pharmacies, and when they reach the store, they can speak to any of our qualified pharmacists and our team of technicians and assistants who are trained and who are very friendly as well. And you can let them know that they want to come and do the free risk assessment. And they will guide anyone who comes into the pharmacy how to go ahead and do this risk assessment. And you can do that in the pharmacy. And at the end of it, you will get a reading which tells you if you're high risk or if you're at low risk. And if you're at high risk, being already in the pharmacy, you now have an option to purchase the device, the sleep apnea strip. So a lot of people are going to tell you, well, I don't know whether I want to sleep with a strip or not. So how does it work? I mean, is it going to be comfortable? What are some of the frequently asked questions about it? Well, yes. Um, when doing a sleep test, um, traditionally, you would have to have done it in a, in a hospital setting. Um, with the advancement of technology and innovation, we can now do it at home. Um, it does require administering some type of device to your body and to your face and arms, certain things such as that, to be able to get the information. This is a little different. This is a quick little strip. If you could take a look at it, Hema. It's you're just placing it on your face. It's actually on the back cover there. You have a diagram. Right. Of it. You so take it out. You just place it on your face. You just sleep for about three to four hours. And what it will do is it will measure the amount of times that you may be stopping and starting breathing in your sleep over an hour. So and this is a test itself, or this is what I put to sleep with. That's the test. More or less, you're just gonna it has two adhesives on the side. You just put it on your face, and you go to bed. Nice. Okay, so I would assume that the directors. Okay, great. Thanks. Um, so uh, you basically, and you do it what, one time, that's it? Yeah, basically one night. A, little, a minimum of about three hours is what's necessary. The more, the better. Um, but by identifying this stopping and starting of the breathing, we can identify your risk. If it's happening more than 15 times an hour, it's definitely something that needs to be addressed. And it's covered through most health insurance plans for the treatment of struggles to get. 
I have to check my health insurance because clearly I'm sleep deprived. <laughs> uh, you know, let's talk. This is just about raising awareness for people to understand. Uh, what do you want to let people, Trinidad and Tobago, know about sleep apnea? Because, you know, people are going to say, well, snoring is not a big deal. Five, getting, going a couple days with a lack of sleep is not going to affect me. They, people just, they disregard it because there is no physical sign. It's not like I feel pain. It's not like I feel like, oh, my God, I'm going to die. That's so true. And in your routine visits at the doctor's office, the doctor never identifies these particular situations because it's in the privacy of your home and you don't really talk about if you're snoring or if the tired factor is something that's leading to some of the symptoms you're addressing. But um, you know, because this is something that's passionate to me, I, I lost my grandmother. Um, you know, she was suffering from sleep apnea for many years. We knew when she was at the house, it was going to be a rough night because she snored like a bear. <laughs> and we just didn't know the correlation between the snoring and, and this problem with not getting enough oxygen to the brain and to the body. And she suffered, um, you know, and had a premature death. My father, just recently, two years ago, um, suffered from a stroke, which also related to untreated sleep apnea, come to find out um, after having trying to convince him, Daddy, you need to, you know, address this, you know, situation. I'm in the field. I'm dealing with this many people every day. Um, you should take advantage of this. Um, you know how some Trinidadian men are. They tend to be a little stubborn <laughs> or stiff neck, so to say. So even with coming from me, he would not um, take heed. But as a result of this eye-awakening situation he went through, he complied with getting to, onto the tr treatment that I provided for him. And it's definitely revolutionized his ability to rehab and giving back that lease of life that he thought he was going to never see again. So that's definitely something mm -hmm. to look forward to. Uh, we take a short break. When we come back, we'll have more for you. And they're doing the test, so definitely, if you think that you need it, go be part of it. Stay with us this is the Morning Brew. Thank you.